watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. Topping the list for tonight, the former Speaker of the Tennessee House of Representatives and his top aide were arrested today on federal charges claiming they took part in a bribery and kickback conspiracy. Glenn Cassida and Cade Cothran were both taken into custody at their homes this morning by FBI agents. Katha, Cothran, and another conspirator are accused of taking part in a get-rich scheme by exploiting their official positions to secure a mailer program that investigators say was operated by Cothran under a fictitious name. A 20-count indictment charges both men with conspiracy to commit the following offenses. Theft from programs receiving federal funds, bribery and kickbacks concerning programs receiving federal funds, honest services, wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. According to the indictment, the accusations date back to 2019 while Cassida was serving as a state rep for Franklin. Both men released on pretrial agreements, including surrendering their passports and avoiding contact with witnesses. Next on the 7 tonight, Morristown police say they now have an arrest warrant for the man believed to be responsible in the hit and run death of a toddler. It happened over the weekend when a car believed to be driven by Walter Mendez accelerated backwards into a home, killing the child as he was sleeping inside. Police say charges have been filed against Mendez, but right now he is not in custody, so police are asking for your help in the search. Mendez may have also used the names Luis Mendez, Luis Mendez, and Luis Cardenas. Authorities ask you to call the number on your screen. It's 423-585-2701. You see it there at the bottom of the screen. If you have any information that can help out in this case. Next now on the 7, students are back on UT's campus. They're getting ready for the start of class tomorrow, believe it or not. But as school begins, you might see a few construction projects on your way to class. There are over a dozen projects that UT has in the works. Some will be finished by the end of the school year. Others will take a few years to complete. The one project students uh, that we spoke with are most excited about, the Neyland Stadium renovations. They're making Neyland a lot nicer, so that's really cool. Um, hopefully that experience is better. And then I know they're adding on the, the, score, the new scoreboard, so that'll be great. Another fan favorite renovation, Lindsey Nelson Stadium. This project is still in the planning phase, but once complete, will include extra seating and upgrades to the team spaces. The design phase is expected to begin for two new residence halls in fall 2022. This comes after UT has seen record enrollment and had to actually lease out a hotel this year to help with student housing. Next on our list tonight, a UT linebacker facing aggravated domestic assault charges tonight. According to court records, 20-year-old William Mohan was arrested after an incident early Sunday morning. A woman called police that morning from her apartment after Mohan had left. The victim claims he showed up intoxicated with a nearly empty bottle of alcohol. Now, she says he made advances, but when she said no, he allegedly grabbed her throat. Now, her roommates reported hearing the victim screaming and they forced Mohan to leave. Now, since Mohan was gone when police arrived, they issued a warrant for aggravated domestic assault charges, and he was later taken into custody. We reached out to UT Athletics about this today and got this statement reading, quote, we are aware of the recent arrest of football student athlete William Mohan. He was immediately suspended indefinitely from all team activities. Next on the Big 7 at 7, four Knox County Sheriff's deputies and an inmate at the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility were taken to the hospital after being exposed to some kind of narcotic. Now, the Sheriff's Office says this happened Sunday. Now, we're told all five have been released from the hospital. A Sheriff's Office spokesperson tells us the department is consulting with the DA's office about the possibility of pressing charges related to the drug exposure. Next up, the city council votes tonight on the reworked agreement to help the old city multi-use stadium's cost and timeline from going off the rails. That revised agreement between the city, county, and sports authority is on the agenda tonight. You may remember last month we found out that changes were needed, like reduced square footage to bring rising construction prices under control for the ballpark in the face of inflation and supply chain problems. Also, the project's special tax zone footprint is being expanded to bolster funding. County Commission passed the agreement last night and the Sport Authority approved it this morning. The goal is to have the stadium open by the 2025 baseball season. And rounding out the Big 7 for us tonight, if you've been outside recently, you may have noticed an increase in mosquitoes. Reporter Paige Weeks has tips from an expert on how to keep your yards as mosquito-free as possible. 
Bo, it hasn't been a fun time for many of us who enjoy the outdoors after the recent rain. Because of that moisture and the warm temperatures we've been seeing, mosquitoes are out in full force. Mosquitoes love places that are warm and moist. Unfortunately for us, those places tend to be in our backyards. Children's toys, gutters, plants, and pots can all provide the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. That's why it's so important to dump any and all standing water from your outdoor areas. The American Mosquito Control Association um, really recommends this idea of Tip Toss Tuesday. So you walk around your property or your community and you just look for containers. Check to make sure there's no water in there, and if there is, just just toss the water in order to keep that water from accumulating in a spot. For those of you wondering about mosquito repelling products, I also asked about that. This brand, Off, is a pretty good one. Experts say it works for the time it says it does, and it's really good about keeping those mosquitoes at bay. However, there are also products on the market that don't work. We have a full breakdown of which ones are good, which ones aren't, right now on WATE.com. Reporting in Oxville, Page Weeks, WATE 6 on your side.